Now that we've done all of the non-negative integers, what about negative integers? Well, one possible encoding is to pair a non-negative integer with a, a boolean that says whether that is uh, negative or not. And then you can implement new versions of addition and subtraction based on using these pairs and, and reusing the unsigned versions of those operations. That's one possible encoding. There are many other possible encodings of numbers. Uh, we could add rational numbers on top of that by pairing a numerator and denominator integer. We could build complex numbers on top of that by pairing uh, rational numbers for the real and imaginary parts. It's not so important that we use this encoding. It's actually a pretty inefficient encoding, uh, given that we're running on top of a processor that gives us much more efficient bitwise operations. Um, so we won't necessarily, we, in fact, we will not change our curly implementation to use this particular encoding. But it's important to understand that we could in principle, so that we can focus our attention on the things that, uh, that are new and different in a language. Looking at what we were able to encode in the Lambda Calculus just gives you an idea of what is possible to encode in principle. Specifically, we get uh, functions. Of course, we get single argument functions directly. That's the main thing that's built in. But we've seen how to encode multi-argument functions through encoding. We can get local bindings in the sense of let encoded as lambda. We can encode booleans with functions and get conditional dispatch out of it. And we can encode numbers.